All right, so welcome. We, as we shared earlier, uh, we started this show, this podcast, whatever, uh, this in information, entertainment Ooh, opportunity. I like it. Edutainment, edutainment, that's edutainment. what it is. Edutainment. Um, and uh, so this is our first opportunity. You are the the very first person to be part of this process. Oh. So I'm, I'm looking to you to Thank also you. help set the uh, the tone okay. of how we're going to do this. This so, is a lot of pressure. Yeah, no pressure at all. <laughs> Not yeah, at you're, all. You're going to live and die on, on this yeah. one moment. <laughs> uh, so... This is an opportunity, so thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you for having me here. I'm really honored. You know I love you and Heidi so much. Well, we'll take care of you later on. Okay. Um, what's not to love? We're just awkward. You guys are so awesome. <laughs> thank you. Um, but you, you're you here, uh, we're here at Palm Healthcare. You're here because you've been speaking around the, the country, yet maybe even the world, on, on your journey. Yes. And... I know we don't have time, and I recommend anybody who has the opportunity to to participate in anything that you're doing to please go and, and listen because your story is incredible. And I know even today, you didn't share the whole thing. Like no. it has so many twists and turns, and it's extraordinary. But like in a nutshell, it's just sort of a high level, what could you share has been the the roller coaster you've you've been on in your recovery and since drugs and alcohol weren't the problem they were the solution as you know uh, you've been dealing with a lot of unique challenges just growing up you you know everyone can relate to one of the things you said beautifully today was that everyone has their own pain mm -hmm. so without you don't have to get into detail but if you could just share a little bit as to what your roller coaster has been like and what brought you to this gift to make a difference in people's life it's so funny um thank you for saying that i uh you know, I feel like there's been so many roller coasters. There's been so many like moments. Um, when I, I I really felt like I remember being in Argentina when I uh, I had a year. I didn't know at that moment that it was my year, and uh, I was visiting my grandmother. She was in the hospital. She was pa passing, but she didn't pass away that day. And I remember walking um, in the dirt roads and in, in, in Argentina where we grew up and. I was like so hot because in January it's their summer, our winter, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so hot. And I was like, because for so long, you know, everyone kept saying like, you know, give yourself a shot. Like, why don't you try to find the person, you know, get to know the person you're trying to kill before you kill her. And um, I, I, I remember like going, gosh, it's so hot. And I was covered in dirt and I was like, oh my God. And then I started going, oh, I'm so hot. Like, and I started screaming, I'm hot, I'm hot. And everyone's like looking at me like I was crazy. And, and I realized at that moment I was feeling, I was mm. feeling heat. And I, at that, I was like, oh my God. And then I realized it was January 15th, a year later after, you know, I got sober this time around. And, you know, from being in a psych ward and trying to kill myself and, you know, all that stuff to being there, it was like mind blowing that I actually felt and that my life got a little bit better. That was a big major turning point for me. And I felt like I came out of a coma. Mm -hmm. And I went, holy shit, I'm alive. Like I'm really alive. Like I'm really here. Like, and then, you know, every year I feel like there's always so many other moments, but that one was like my first. First of all, that is, to share that you could appreciate just something like that and be grateful for what most people take for granted or well, get angry at, oh, I'm so yeah, hot. I'm so arg, hot. Arg, arg, now I'll probably like, be like, ah, oh, it's hot, you right. know? But <laughs> then, like, that moment, like, I felt, like, and I feel, I, 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 as addicts and alcoholics, and especially in recovery and early recovery, I feel like, you know, we don't know how to feel. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't know it's okay to feel hot and uncomfortable. Or like, I feel, you know, I wake up in a bad mood because I miss my dad. Like, I'm really missing him and I'm angry at my boyfriend or my brother or men in my life. And it's really that I miss him because he's no longer on this earth. You know, it's like, it's how not- How do you find that moment to recognize that in yourself? Like, what is it, what trained you to be able to appreciate that it's not about them, it's not about, whatever is going on. It's not all about outside, that you, you ceased being codependent with your environment and you took responsibility. How did you make that shift? Writing, I had to write every single day in my early recovery mm -hmm. and I always go back to that, but I would write. And first, you know, they'd be like, we want you to write three pages. And I know it's not like program stuff, but like it helped me and I'd be like, 
fuck. Literally, excuse my language. I don't know if I'm. And I'd be like, fuck, fuck, for three pages, fuck, right? And then, and then, like, like home, like Bart Simpson. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right on the, on the and then, like, I, I think, like, maybe, like, a week later, it was like, fuck, 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 and then it was like, I feel like shit, like you know. And then, and then, like, you start like, there's something really powerful from you know your brain to your mm. arm, your arm to hand, hand to pen, pen to paper. The truth comes out. And then I'd wake up and I'm like, you know. I really miss my dad today. Like, why did he have to go? Or, you know, why am I having to struggle today? And I don't know. I'm so over going to meetings or whatever it is that I was feeling. And I was I'm over going to meetings because I don't want. I'm not good with structure. Mm. And it's like finding those little things and then reading it to somebody at first. And now yeah. I can see it. You, you still know? have them all? Yes, I do. I do. I have bins and bins in uh, my garage in LA. Wow. Yeah. So do you find yourself like? Just randomly going in and picking one and just kind of checking in, or how do you? I haven't in a long time. Okay. It'd be really interesting to do that, actually. I have the two sheets uh, of That's who I pop. wanted to. No. Oh. <laughs> um, I have the two sheets of, I have this thing where at two and a half years sober, I had to figure out who I wanted to be right. and what I wanted to do because I called, you know, I was uh, Hollywood a chapter and the whole thing, and I wrote 85 things, and I still have those in my nightstand. That is amazing. That's really cool to look at. I like looking at it once a year to see what's come true. Because mm. they always say, be careful what you ask for. And I used to hate right. those sayings. Well, how many, oh, that's a great question. So how many, when you say hate those sayings, how many cliches have you come to go, oh, they're cliche because they're true? All of them. <laughs> I swear to you, all of them. And it gets me mad because I was like, I'm not gonna be that girl, like screw that, that's so stupid. Like, and now it's like, it's so true. Let go and let God. You know what I mean? Like it's like easy does it. Like it's like crazy because it those things are so simple, and if you hear them again over and over and over again, it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, and they say this like, you know, there are no coincidences. Like God doesn't make mistakes. So if I'm hearing something, I always say like first time, uh, second time, you know, I better be starting to pay attention. And third time, if I'm not doing something about it or really accept that, then that's on me. I'm the fool. So, so thankfully, you're no longer waiting for the sledgehammer. God starts with a feather, then starts the ball peen. You wait for just the the ten ounce hammer. Yeah. Some people wait for the you know the the sledgehammer or the tr like it reminds me of the, the last words of my great uncle, a truck. No, yes, no. So. <laughs> okay, I, I hope it's not true. No, it's okay. not. Because <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> no, it's quite quite. Right. It was a joke. Uh, Some of the things you shared today, and, and every time when you come and speak, it's such a blessing and an honor because, I don't know about you, but when you hear even the same speaker, they might even s almost script it, and you're not at all, but like say something that the first time you heard it, maybe you didn't hear it. All the time. I love that. Yeah. I love that. When I, um, I remember... Um, when I love hearing speakers, you know, I'll be like, oh my God. And like sometimes like, you know, I, I just go, oh, I love this part. Or if I hear it, but then I hear it differently. Mm -hmm. However, I remember being in treatment. My sponsor at the time took me to this big meeting in LA. I went and my now speaker, my now sponsor was speaking. And I got the guy, I knew the guy who was doing the sound because some people will allow you to record. Mm -hmm. So I, they, he gave me the CD and I went back to treatment and I would listen to it like it was a song wow. over and over again. And I'm like, I love this part, this part, this part. And then I met my sponsor again a, uh, a year and a half later. Um, and my sponsor then was leaving and she wanted me to like have a temporary and this and that and, and then she was going to be gone longer than she thought she was so it kind of worked out that I got to start working with my now sponsor mm -hmm. who has I mean all women all people in recovery have saved my life but I that for me was my music I listened to it was wow. like music it, it, of the heart you know and like I, that's why when I, I love hearing speakers, like I love, I have, I brought from LA about 20 speaker tapes, uh, wow. CDs, not tapes, who says tapes? Do they still but make those? CDs, I don't yeah. think they make that So anymore. when I'm driving around. They make CDs still? I, I know, I'm that girl, I really am that girl. <laughs> I still have VHS at home, I'm not gonna lie, but not the player, I still have, anyways, that's a whole other story. <laughs> So in that box with all the other writings, you have the player to be able to play the VCR tape, VC, VHS tapes that you've got on your... Uh... You're horrible. Wow. Yes. That's, that's not no, awkward. But you know, I know. <laughs> you know what I thought? Like, instead, like, as I drive around all over Florida this mm -hmm. week, speaking everywhere, I thought, you know what? I'm going to put the CDs in and just listen to speaker tapes For sure. because I can't get to meetings. 
So there was segueing into that question. So we talked about, uh, as part of our conversation earlier, how do you kill the monster before it's little when you can't get to a meeting there's one of your strategies. Yeah. I listen to YouTube and like self-help things on okay. there. You can go to speakers.org, I think it's called, and mm -hmm. you can hear speakers on, you know, and all that. I'm not good with technology stuff, but I do do those things because okay. sometimes I'm just really uncomfortable. And, you know, the feather and all that, I'd like the feathers to just touch me instead of the hammers or, oh, the truck. Sometimes I don't even realize the truck just hit me, right. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And like... Um, it's starting to affect my health right. right now. And I I I don't want my health to be affected anymore. Like I don't want to be in pain. And you know, I thought like I had dealt with all these issues at 11, you know, and now being over 11 years sober, mm -hmm. I I've done so much intense work that I thought, "Oh my god, I I've, I've done so much work, like I've gotten through that." And you know, there's things that come up again out of nowhere, this pain, you know? Mm -hmm. And what my therapist and my sponsor said is they're old wounds that come up and mm -hmm. that you need to reheal on a different level. Like, I just wanna feel this feather right now, you right. know? Like, not the truck. What could it mean then if, if right now, what would be the possibility if it is a message. What is a maybe a bigger message you're needing to receive right now? What is God telling you? Do you think? Self care. Let him do the worrying. Let him doing. You know. I remember in early sobriety when I was doing the step work with my sponsor, and we talked about this oh for hours and hours and over and over for a few years about the whole thing. Like I have to be perfect. You know, I, I hear that a lot in early sobriety from people. You know, oh no, my mom wants me to be perfect. Like I had to be perfect for my dad or this or that. You know, and like my sponsor would be like, "Can you define perfect in this scenario?" In whatever conversation we we're talking about, and I couldn't define it. There is no perfection. There's nothing like there's nothing like perfect adherence is what they say. But there's no perfect. Like right. what is a perfect child? Like you know, can you is there a definition of a per you know what I mean? Like there Well, it, first of all, perfection is the lowest form of uh, the lowest standard possible because mm -hmm. it's since it's impossible to strive for it is just a cop out. Mm -hmm. Um so what you're sharing is about that acceptance and you can from this moment now decide what that is. Mm -hmm. What is the perfect moment? Just being human and being right here, right now. Being human is the most beautiful thing. My sponsor always says, why don't you try to be a human being instead of a human doing? Because mm -hmm. we tend to be a do. Uh, I'm a doer, I used to right. say. And I don't want to be that. Right, because you got to first be the person that does the stuff that, you know, like the word behave, is be and have. Mm. So you got to be the person who can gracefully and elegantly do the things without the the stress just naturally in the zone with presence, just being in the moment, and then you get to have all the rewards. Mm -hmm. It's it, The only way we could feel real stress is to lose the present moment mm -hmm. because all stress is is worry about something that has not yet happened or that has happened that we can't even change you that we're playing the story over anyway. Exactly, exactly. And then like, and then, but then there's that thing right there. If you're like worrying about like the, like what's going to happen, then you're trying to play God. Mm -hmm. And you're setting yourself like my sponsor used to be like, and I don't, I, I know I'm talking a lot about her right now, but she'd be okay. like, so did you make the sun come up this morning? Did you make the stars like you know like bright right. today? I'm like, no. She's like, did you wake up your mom and your brother? He's he was in the military at the time. I'm like, no. And she's like, well then you're failing, like you know. And I'm not God. Like I don't want to be. I don't want that role. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of role, work. And you know, I feel like. One of the things that I'm always like striving for and what I, I remember I searched for for so long in my life is this. That's and all. You already have it. Yeah. And that's that's a big key thing. You know, I used to, I like to talk and not breathe. <laughs> well, you know why people sigh, right? Huh. Because they're not breathing. Yeah. And God's like, McFly, <laughs> McFly, little oxygen here. So when you're feeling stress... Mm -hmm. We sigh because when we're stressed, we don't breathe, which is why when, you know, as just one of the many strategies for stress is breathing. Yeah. Because, like, it's kind of God's elixir. Yeah. Yeah. Without it, we'll die. Yeah. Like, that's one of the few things, like that and water and some food. Mm -hmm. You know, other than that, all this other stuff is just stuff. Mm -hmm. I know, and I, I feel like those are, like, the simple things that sometimes we just need to get, like, down pack, you know, in order 
to have that first layer of foundation. Right. And then to get the next foundation and, and the next la layer and the next layer. And I also feel that with like, it doesn't always have to be just people in recovery. It's every one of us as human beings. Well, if, if you uh, spend more time with some of the stuff we talk about, we, we focus on everyone on the planet is in fact an addict. Always. Yeah. I, I'm a firm believer of yeah. that. And we have a great model for it. And the truth is, is that if the only difference between someone who struggles with a substance addiction versus someone who suffers with shopping or internet or something like that, the two things are, one, most people don't die from relapsing from a shopping addiction. Mm -hmm. right? They may go broke, but you know it's, it's more socially acceptable. And when people are in that withdrawal from substance there is a, a physical nature and and it, it messes with your brain it's like you're gonna die like you mm -hmm. feel like you're oh. gonna die yeah. and what would you do to prevent yourself from would you steal to get the food to to survive Absolutely. so it's the same thing so people end up doing some behaviors and unfortunately most people haven't gotten really hip to the the idea that people are not their behaviors mm -hmm. but what happens is if you do something that is violating your value system or someone else's value system, you then, as a human doing, get associated to that and then you get blamed or you blame yourself for some of the things you did that violated your belief system in the first place and then it creates this negative stigma and then it becomes you're an addict mm -hmm. instead of you're a person. Yeah. Right, I mean, yeah. I, I know you go to meetings. Do you, how do you identify at meetings? Whatever room I'm in, I'll identify. So I won't, if I go like to uh, a, 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 an Alcoholics Anonymous, I won't be like, hi, my name is Jeffrey, I'm an addict alcoholic. Like I'll just, I'm an alcoholic. I respect the rooms, like whatever room that is. So, But I have a thing though, because I am in recovery. Uh, so that's where I was taking this. Yeah, so I like struggle with that. I just follow the formats of whatever room I'm in because I don't want to try to be uniquely different because I tend to suffer from that um, because I'm not uniquely different. So, it's, well, well, yes, you are. I am. Everyone is. We all are uniquely different yes, individuals. We but that. in in I don't I don't. I just want to walk into a room and just be another, whether it be an addict or another alcoholic that's in recovery to try to be a student. So I, I guess what I'm getting at in, in this bit of conversation, do you have you or is this part of the any movement? Because I noticed some people have been okay with this saying, I'm a grateful recovering, alcoholic. et cetera, right? Now the presuppositions there are then what? You are grateful? and actively in recovery, it just so happens that you suffer from the malady of whatever the addiction is that you're identifying with at that moment. Um, I wonder if that could, I don't know how acceptable that is, if, it's, if there's been a, a shift in that or do people go, oh, you're one of those. Like, I, I don't know how that works, but where, I guess where I'm getting at is helping shift that identity from the doing to being, right? Because if you're being the best you you could be, you may fall, you may fail and all of that, but you're still God's gift. You're still mm -hmm. integral. You're still a, a creative, contributing person. You just happen to suffer with the malady of addiction. You break out in handcuffs when you have mm -hmm. it. So, like, you get what I'm saying? I like, get and what you're saying. I'm part of, I guess, the, the, the mission behind this conversation as well is to expose people to what's behind all of the work. Mm -hmm. Because that's work, right? That's the doing. Mm -hmm. But who's the being? How do we get to the core of who we are being, not what we're doing? Mm -hmm. So you don't just go to a meeting to go to, you do the work, right? I get it. Like you go to the gym. If you lift the weights and you're pissed, do your muscles still grow? Yeah. Yeah. So you could still just do the work. And, and I and get still that. still, yeah, yeah. And as you continue to do that, if we can continue to dig deeper into who we are at our core and celebrate that, and be okay with being unique and not being like a jerk about it, but just by honoring everyone else's uniqueness. Yeah. I wonder if that would help change the uh, the perspective of things. I, I, I think it would, 100%. I also feel like, you know, they say don't judge, don't judge. Like, I don't wanna be here to judge people, I wanna be here to love people and celebrate people. Right. Like, and, and like you were talking about, and I think it's so important, because I know, you know, that I am in recovery. At this right moment, some of us do recover, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, 
I also know that I'm an arm length away from my next drink or drug if I choose that. Today I choose life, I choose to live, yeah. I choose to turn my will over, I choose to be in recovery, I choose to try to be my best self. And with that being said, I'm also through trial and error going to figure out who that true self, best self is. And that has nothing to do and with recovery. No. but <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's human. Yeah, but that's a celebration. Right. So, you know, and I remember like, they wanted me to talk really slow in early recovery because I, I must have talked really fast. I still do. But um, oh, when you get excited, I know. You're like, really? And then I'm like, I feel like a robot. This is so boring. I'm going to be boring forever. And they'd be like, there's nothing about you that will ever be boring. And I didn't understand what that meant. You can't even do boring in a boring way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I know I will never be boring. Like, I know that that's not who I was individually made to be. Mm -hmm. So I want to celebrate that, like, the wacky part of me. So because I'm in the rooms or, or, or whatnot and what you're talking about that, like, I, I, I don't want to be that angry, bitter, mm -hmm. hurt, victim person in my life. And that's who I used to be. So I don't want, and the reason why I was hurt or angry is because I was hurt and I was in pain. Like, I don't want that. So in order to change that, I have to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. And that's where that doing the work and that right. celebrating or having those moments come into place. Yeah. And knowing that I'm, we're all individually made and we're yeah. supposed to be who we're, we were meant to be if we choose to be. If that makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. And to allow others to do the same, that to yeah. celebrate their differences. And it's okay if someone's, you know, being like, I always let your freak flag fly. Like, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just be <laughs> weird and awkward. Like, yeah. who cares? As You're... a matter of fact, the weirder you are, the more permission you give me. Uh huh. Like, yeah. rather than it being like a, a, a judgy thing, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, whew, finally, yeah. another, another member of my tribe. Because the truth is, we're all living on the island of misfit toys. We just don't realize it. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to find boxes to fit in, and, and there is no box because we're already in a big giant box together. Yeah, yeah, we are. And like, I, I just feel like, you know, I was, uh, I was in LA and I was feeding uh, the homeless at the LA mission uh, in January, in November and December. And I was with this guy, and he had all these stars on his collar, and everyone's like taking pictures. And me and him were getting dirty, our hands dirty. Mm -hmm. Like, some other people were there, like taking pictures, you know, doing yeah. the whole thing. And we were talking, and I, everyone's like, and I was like, no, and and I was like, you must be really high ranked because you have stars. He's like, nah, just a you know, just an officer or whatever it was he said. And he was like, we started talking about recovery, and uh, he says, um, he says to me, oh, I started a thing at the prisons in LA. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. Like you know, like <laughs> not really paying that much, you know. And then um, we started talking, and I he I found out it's the sheriff of California, <laughs> and I was like, yo, we don't mix normally, you know. Right. And like we started laughing, and and. Um, and we had one thing in, in that was very, you know, uh, we, we had one passion. We wanted to help people, you know. And mm -hmm. and um, I was like, listen, on the East Coast, like, is it happening what's happening on the East Coast? He's like, what's that? I'm like, is the fentanyl coming into the heroin with the heroin now here? Are people dying? Like, a lot of people dropping, you know, yeah. dropping because of it. And he's like, it hasn't happened here yet. And I was like, what? And he's like, is it happening there? And I was like, all over the East Coast. Yeah. And it's kind of going mid a little bit now. People are dropping dead left and right. And yeah. I go, this is such an epidemic. He's like, I know it's an epidemic. I'm like, it's going to get here. And it hit me. And I looked at him and I said, you know what's crazy between the West Coast versus the East Coast right now? There are no second chances in, in on the East Coast. Mm. It's scary to yeah. know that. You know, it's scary that this epidemic is happening and that people still want to, like, pretend it's not. And it is. And, yeah. like, we need to keep having conversations like this to talk about it, you know? And, and the two things, it just reminded me of something you had said today as you, as you pre-framed your, your conversation, and it, it came full circle right now what you shared, is you started to share that was your story, and you said look for the commonalities, that it's, it's going to, to, you'll relate to it if, you, if you're looking for the commonalities. Mm -hmm. And that's what you just shared as well as like your purpose. It wouldn't matter who you were talking to, it's the the purpose was serving in that moment. Mm -hmm. Then as you continued, you're, it wouldn't matter again who you're talking to, the purpose is let's make a difference. Let's not like have this be so serious. Let's help people and make a difference. We may all differ on the strategies we get there. We may have different ways, but if we all are on the same page that we're here to serve, we're here to make a difference, we're here because we care, and agree on the purpose, 
we can debate and have conversations and be flexible in our processes. We can come up with new strategies. And by allowing, again, the freak flag fly, yeah, your strategy that. may be different than mine versus his versus, you know, what have you. But if we stay focused on the purpose, we stay focused in your, like your recovery, it's beyond your recovery. It's, you don't want recovery for the sake of recovery. You want the sake of recovery so that you can create that incredible life. Mm -hmm. And you're flexible in how you get there. Yeah. If you don't get a meeting, you got your tapes. What else would you do if you don't have a... YouTube. YouTube. You can, yeah. Um, you can read books. You can get them on your phone. You can talk to somebody else. Like, thank God I have people in my life that are in recovery and that I can, like, call and text or, you know, I tell them myself. It was mm -hmm. so important. I learned that like in early recovery that I need to tell on myself. And if I don't tell on myself, then I'm like, I'm going down. I'm on planes a lot. Like I'm, right. you know, we, we have big lives, like, mm -hmm. you know, busy lives rather. And, and, uh, and there's sometimes I just, I can't get to meetings. Like, and so I'll like, I'll check in with people. Like I, yeah. I really do. I tell myself people who aren't even in the program that are my friends, like I call, we call them the normies, but like my, my friends that don't have a problem, like I'll be like, yo, like this is happening right now. Like, can you help? Like, I just need to say something like, cause I don't want to keep that secret. I don't want, I don't right. want that one to be the reason why I would go out because I know I could, you know, and people are like, I will never, ever, ever drink again. Like, I don't know about it. never. Like I'll, yeah, if, this moment. yeah I, I don't know about never. Um, I'm not one of those people that never thinks about it, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't, just don't do it. Well, and I'm going to hallucinate that as time has gone on, your moments of thinking about it are getting smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller. further apart. Exactly. And yeah. I can I can see like, OK, I can remember I still can remember what it made me feel like and how uncomfortable it made me feel mm -hmm. in the end, you know, and I know like the shame like I've relapsed so many times that like that shame of keeping that secret got worse and worse and worse. So. That actually brings me to another idea, another thought, and I really want to honor you for, for being open about your recovery and all of that, because I, I wonder if someone, if someone spent their addicted life hiding it, and then they don't celebrate the fact that they're in recovery and they hide it, what's changed? Nothing. Not one thing. Not one thing. It's that's a that's the, that's a fundamental shift that we need to you know sort of recognize because if we're hiding anything, that's just running the same pattern that got us into the mess in the first place. Then it doesn't matter what you're struggling with. Mm -hmm. It's reverse pride. Yeah, I'm sober or in right. recovery. So there's a you know who Dr. Seuss is. Hmm. So Dr. Seuss has this uh, saying that has been very helpful for me, and I wonder if if you could relate said, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind do not matter and those who matter do not mind. Ooh, I love that. So when you said, you know, you're normies, nobody's normal. No, so I don't even we know are, there is no normal. Everyone's <laughs> addicted to something. Right. And no one is normal. There are no normal. No. Right. The new, the, the abnormal is a new normal. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's like, you know, d dysfunctional. This, everybody's dysfunctional. Yeah. Like to even, to, to even claim you're dysfunctional is like, uh, all right, so... You have eyes too. Yeah. I mean, like, what's the big deal? Um, so, if there was one sort of final bit of advice, because I'm about to thank you again this, for, for this. I, I know, want to do I this know. more. Oh, you, you want to keep talking? No, I'm saying, oh, okay. I, I mean, <laughs> I got more to share. I Let's got go. a lot to share, I know but I you mean, do. I want to do this Absolutely. more often. Please, every time put you come you over, we could do this. Okay. Put me on the spot. I mean, this is. I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm asking questions for me too. Well, I'm I'm, I'm, getting, I'm I'm asking things yeah. and hearing things that I'm like, oh, yeah. Stuff. So, oh, that right. That last thing I wanted to say, and then and then some, you know, any last words of advice. You shared earlier that you had some some voices come in and and give you some God moments. Maybe it was your your angel, a guardian angel, some beautiful spiritual next level, like inexplicable yeah. things. When you were doing that writing, I'm just curious. Did you also have any messages come through that I'm only asking because it just came to me to ask you. As I was thinking about it, because you're obviously connected on that level, you, you've got that conduit there, has any of your writings or things of that nature, has that, have you ever looked back at anything you read and going, oh, hello, God? I have. Yeah. I have a lot, uh, uh, quite a few times. Not, yeah. not every time, but uh, quite a few times. I, I think. I'd like to share actually a part Please? of it. And yeah. one of them was that I was going to be okay. Yeah. And being okay is is perfect. For and me. you're okay with that? 
<laughs> I was going to get through it, you know, and different things like, I love you, you know. Mm. I love you. I've never left you. Ah, the footprints in the sand. Never left you. That one thing, you know, that you always go, like, I used to scream, like, why me, God? I talk a lot about yeah. that. And, like, I now know why me, mm. you know. And here's maybe what I've noticed some people struggle with, myself included. Are you okay with being that important to God? Ooh. I guess so. Yeah. That's the struggle. Yeah. Right? Marion Williamson shares about the biggest fear is not, you know, it's, it's that we're more powerful, powerful beyond measure. And that's like the challenge because you have this duality. Like there's part of you that thinks like you got to be humble. How dare you? And then the other part is like, like a breakthrough moment for me was like, man, if I'm made in God's image, how dare I play small? How dare I not honor everyone else's ability to whatever mm. it is? Their hugeness could be being the best mom ever to be just and really the hugeness is being present and being okay. Because most people can't do that. That's what the addiction is. The addiction is drama. The addiction is we're addicted to distractions. Mm -hmm. We just can't sit and be okay and in this moment because then all of a sudden God rushes in and goes, ah, here's my opportunity. You're like, what the? Uh -huh. And then like, I know, yeah, it's so true. yeah, and then, and then it, like you, we're, we're almost shamed and guilted into being like, I'm okay being awesome, I'm, and, and not in an egotistical way, but to know that I may have a powerful impact just in this moment right here. Like just what you shared today, the seeing the eyes light up that, you know, sometimes when you speak, I'm sure there are some people who are just coming out of detox and they're like, they, mm. they're just feeling like crap. Yeah. It's not about you. They yeah. just, they, they feel horrible. But then there's other people who are just on, you know, sit on bated breath. And then other people are just like, all of a sudden something you say is like that bomb. They're like, whoa. Uh -huh. That, yeah. And that one moment could be the one that changes the world. And if nothing else, it changes theirs. And then we are doing God's work. I had a guy there come up to me and he goes, I think I had my turning point right now with you. And I was like, really? He's like, I think it's my turn. I'm like, you turned. You can't turn yeah. around Keep again. Going. I was like, <laughs> you just turned. Yep. Just know you don't yep. think it. Just know you turned. Own it. Um, you know, it's so true what you say about like that. Like, if you really dissect it, I mean, if you want to get like a little, I mean, if we, we can, we have these conversations anyways, but so really any kind of reaction that anyone's even getting to say, it's just you and I, and we're having a conversation and then you say something that I don't really like. And then I start raising my voice. I'm not really raising my voice at you. I'm raising my voice from childhood stuff that I didn't like. It really has nothing to do about you. And so like the great gift is normally I can be like, that's not about me. He's, he's doing that or she's acting out. Has another, I don't even know them. That's not about me, but it's how I react. And it's like, but then if it's someone closer, like, you know, in your uh, relationship, like my boyfriend, like we start fighting. It's not about me. It's not about him. This is nothing to do with us. But how do we not take that personal? So how do you, and you go underneath and you start uncovering, discovering, and discarding. And it's all childhood. Mm -hmm. It's all that, like, we weren't heard. We were in pain. I didn't like, you know. That's why I see a lot of k kids, like, acting out because they want, you know, the cigarette yeah. or this and that. It's like because you were never heard. Well, and it's also, I mean, we don't have time to go into it. Yeah. But there's a number of ways to approach that and growing up that part of you. Because really it's a part of you that made a decision about life based on resources that you had at that time. So if, you know, between three and five, you made certain decisions about life just because something happened, you had the resources, the experience, the wisdom of a three to five year old, you made a decision about life, what life meant in that context, based all your decisions after that on that, and then someone brings up a point over here that violates that whole structure that survived, that worked for you, that, that was successful, that was appropriate for a three-year-old or a five-year-old, but we still run the same pattern because it's ingrained because we built it on that foundation. Preach. Seriously. Was, preach, preach, preach. It's so, so good. It's so good. It's so true. And then they didn't get the coping skills. Well, they, they did. They just were well, that, inappropriate. That was the coping skill. Yeah, yeah, that was the inappropriate coping skill. They, and then... And then they have, if they have the gene, and then exposed, and then they're like, ugh. And so then they're hooked, and then they're committing crimes. Then they're the bad people because they're an addict. No, they're, right. they're not addicts. They're human beings. They're human beings. People. You know, we've got to break that. St I mean, we are breaking that stigma. Mm -hmm. At this right moment, we're breaking that stigma. I, I just always go, like, ignorance is bliss. Like, that's all they know. 
Like that's all. No, they ignorance know when, is pain. Ignorance is, yeah, it is. Ignorance it's only is. temporary bliss. Ignorance is is the I agree. the same thing as you know getting high. So in the moment, you're ignorant of all the other stuff. You could you could ignore all the stressors, but then it's like swiping an emotional credit card. Then it comes back, and you're no longer ignorant. Now you have a new level of of uh, gnosis of knowledge that like oh no, now I've just made a worse situation because of my ignorant time. Mm -hmm. And the more we ignore things, you know, it's like, it, well, I'll give you a great example. I'm sure you know people who maybe have a, a situation and they ignore it. Mm -hmm. and they pretend it didn't happen. And what does it do? Like a tumor, it grows and it grows. And the more you ignore it, the bigger it gets. Yeah, so all yeah. of a sudden you turn around and you go, oh my gosh, look at all this debt I've got, yeah. this emotional and spiritual debt that you have to repay. But the cool thing about recovery, and this is recovery from anything, mm -hmm. is that it's one of the few areas, like personal development, let's just call it that, that's what it is. It's personal and spiritual growth is that when you do the work, you're actually not only investing in yourself, you're repaying that mm. old debt at the same time. So true. And it's such a, a I mean, that investment is, is priceless. And every time you speak, you're investing in yourself as you invest in others. Mm -hmm. And you're giving back that gift because you're also, I mean, it, it transcends because you're giving people permission to celebrate their journey. And, and that's, right. that's why it's so important that we all do share our story. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Like, oh, and the welcome. thing that's important too is that there should be, I no longer look at the things that happen or I experienced as shame. There should be no they're shame. Gifts. Yeah, they're gifts. They are gifts. You know, I like. I think I said it here, or, or when I was speaking. Like, I used to scream, "Why me?" I know, I know why. And it's to help others to, and it is to give permission. And it's also to be like, there is nothing, you know, there's nothing shameful, too shameful that you can't say. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing that's gonna be like, oh, you did really? Wow. Like, I remember when I was doing like my my resentment. I was reading my sexual inventory and all that to my sponsor. And, like yeah, I did that, and she was like, yeah, oh, don't worry, and don't worry about it. I did blah blah blah, and then uh, I was like, oh my god, okay. And then um, <laughs> at the end, like a month later, I was like, remember when I told you to? She's like, what are you talking about? She had no idea. She didn't even remember the whole entire conference. And I was like, and I thought I was that special. You were that, putting so much weight on yeah, it. Yeah, and, and I was like, oh my like, god, oh. and like she was like, huh? I don't remember. I have no idea. You know how many people I work with? Like, and it was like nothing. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like there's nothing too shameful. I don't feel that shame. I, I feel, I don't feel that shame. Yeah, and, and it seems like you're also appreciating that it's, it, you know, the character, the word character is to chisel. So those experiences and then being able to, to celebrate it is how you build character. You're chiseling away the, the stories that have slowed you down mm -hmm. and you're using it as a piece of art mm -hmm. to influence other mm -hmm. thoughts. I can I just come in and sit in, in one of your groups? God, yeah, you're amazing. Fine. Yeah, well, thank you. And we'll take care of you after that. You know, okay, <laughs> no, you are. I always want to sit in your group. I remember when I walked in the first time and um, you guys were dancing and it was like 9, 15 in the morning. And everyone was dancing and it was like all these people and like you and Heidi. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? What is going, this party I didn't know about. It was and club like, rehab. It, it was club <laughs> rehab and it was so awesome. And just like, and everyone was standing up and saying, I am, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And like, I was so motivated and blown away. I got to tell you, I I was so inspired. I've been so enamored with you and Heidi. You. And what you guys are about and what your cause is and what, you know, you're passionate for this is and how you go about it because it's a whole nother twist. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a calling, you know, I've always wanted to make a difference, you know, and, and feel like that, I guess it's a spiritual thing. Like I remember I was at a Tony event and that was, that was the moment I had was, you know, I struggled with, you know, all the whatevers and, you know, I'm human. And uh, I was in this one process and that's when I had that moment, like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm one with God and God is everything. It's my duty to celebrate others' transformation, to, to lead by example as best I can, and I'm human, I screw up all the time. And if I can just come from a place of that, if I'm gonna be God-like, Christ-like, Buddha-like, whatever, the, any of the avatars that have led us, lit, lit the way, 
my purpose is to celebrate others and to you know find a way. And I, the only reason I got into personal development is because I was a mess. Mm, yeah. I, was a, I was an absolute wreck of a human. So I was like, well, the first person I got to work on is me. Mm-hmm. And I always, when I was from, even from a little kid, I wanted to make a difference. Like I remember one time I was like eight years old and we were at, it was just Thanksgiving dinner. We were out to a restaurant for whatever reason. And there was a guy sitting by himself. And I was like, mom, like, can, can we, this poor guy, he's mm-hmm. like all by himself. And she's like, well, do you want to invite him over? Oh. And I was like, well, yeah, I do actually. <laughs> so I walked over to him, I'm like, hey, you know, you want to come over and, you know, have her. And, and you know, he, he, he kind of got all teary-eyed, so he didn't come over and, and you know, whatever. I, I think there might have been a part of me that's like, whew, that was awkward. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but there was always that inner thing to yeah. want to make a difference. And I know we all have that. We all have that. And the more we can be okay with however that looks, because oftentimes we, we compare ourselves to others and go, we got to do it this way or that way. And, and it's so important that we all just accept whatever way we do it and just be present and the next right thing will be revealed now you gotta have goals you gotta have outcomes you gotta have purpose mm-hmm. you know I'm not saying disregard morals ethics or anything like that of course but when we're present and we're just connecting mm-hmm. the right thing will be said the right story will be told the right moment will be shared that can just change a little bit and some okay that was 180 degrees turn my life around or mm-hmm. just enough to, to the spark yeah because you still need the spark mm-hmm. you know if you don't have that spark to get things going then we're just sort of a b- bunch of kindling but once we get that and then we have something to nurture and then that's where we can sort of find the other ways to keep the flow the momentum going in in our life and continue to add value yeah no it's so true it's so true. Oh my gosh, I, I went like this, like I was gonna choke myself. But I know there's a mic right there. Uh, your I heart's went, right there. Yeah, my <laughs> heart was right here. No, I, that was weird and awkward. Right? No, but it's so beautiful. Like you, it's so beautiful. It's like you're actually saying everything I need to know right now. I need to hear. I need to know. I need to like, and I'm doing. I'm like, okay, you're confirming some things for me. Beautiful. Well, see, that's that's what's perfect about being just present yeah. when you're not you're just being there and yeah. not thinking about too much and just going oh wait huh there you go mm-hmm. and you know the 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 acceptance if we could just receive all the challenges as gifts it's helping us build our character in our story and not just a character but character and that it's opportunities that things are it's not happening to us it's for us these mm-hmm. are opportunities that just allow us to step into who we truly are, who we need to be. Mm-hmm. It's so true. Well, thank you so much. I know this was so much longer than, uh, than I expected. I don't know if we're still rolling on there. Wow. Wow. So any last words? We're, we, I don't know if anyone's watching on Facebook, but uh, we did also run that. Oh my God, I totally <laughs> forgot about the thing. And then yeah. like, and that camera's doing its own thing. Yeah, and like, yeah. It zooms in whenever, oh I, my Well, God. apparently, I guess we'll look like, back. And I'm like quivering, like about not trying to hold back the tears. Um, you know, just give yourself a shot. Just, just hang on today to no matter what. Like no matter what, no matter what, I'm gonna try to get to know myself. Beautiful. And we love you for who you are and who you aren't. I don't know.